Welcome back to Finance News, the only place on YouTube currently not selling you courses that help you lose all of your money. It's been another crazy week in the stock market, so let's get straight into your headlines. It looks like the crash of 2022 is finally here, everyone. Major indexes have been selling off in their worst start to the year since records began. The S&P 500 is down 5% this week so far and 18% year to date. Although that's nothing when compared to the Nasdaq, which is also down 5% for the week, but down a whopping 27% for the year so far. Investors have been looking for the exit signs as fears of a recession have been rising with slowing down supply chains, rising interest rates and inflation maintaining its non-transitory nature. Jay Powell came out this week to tell markets that they should expect to see some pain and there will be no soft landings here. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, whose job it is to maintain a strong jobs market and keep inflation under control, has warned that trying to bring down inflation to the bank's 2% target rate will cause some pain. At the moment, we're not sure if the pain will also be transitory or if it's terminal. I think it depends on what you're investing in. Even the biggest companies in the world aren't immune from the current market crisis, with Apple being the latest victim to finally succumb, even though its latest earnings beat expectations. The iPhone maker, who has held the crown as the world's most valuable company, has lost it this week as a new leader emerges. But it's not in the S&P 500, this one's a few thousand miles away. Taking the crown is the gas producer Saudi Aramco, the company has finally traded places with the tech giant as demand for its commodity soars as it benefits from problems with global energy shortages caused by the Russia-Ukraine invasion. The company, which is still 95% owned by the Saudi government, is able to tap into easy to access oil fields, taking the black stuff and feeding the world's ever increasing demand. The company is expected to report net income figures this weekend for the first quarter of 2022 of around $38 billion, a near doubling compared to the year before. It's been an interesting week for earning some mixed results from some of the most popular stocks on the YouTube and social media scene. Coming out of the gate this week, Tattooed Chef reported very poor earnings for the first quarter of 2022, with a 43% miss in its expected earnings. Growing revenues but consistently high costs have kept the company in the red as it seeks to dominate the plant-based food market. Another popular stock here on YouTube, Palantir, a company that supplies software and technology services to governments and commercial clients looking to understand their data better, also delivered slightly weaker earnings and saw its share price tank now sitting in the $7 range. Although not all doom and gloom, don't worry guys, Disney is showing the market the way to go as it added more subscribers to its streaming platform Disney+. Plus. The company famous for Mickey Mouse added 7.9 million subscribers in the last quarter of trading, taking its total number of customers to 137 million. Clearly, Netflix subscribers are looking for something a little bit less hard hitting and a little bit more easygoing as they watch all of their favorite shares tank on the stock market. Sticking with the stock market, Robinhood, the popular US trading app that attracted millions of new subscribers and budding options investors throughout the pandemic, is looking to be in the crosshairs of a takeover. The company, which has seen its share price plummet since a huge IPO back in 2021, now sits at a market cap of $7 billion, falling all of the way from around 10 times that number. The potential takeover is from the billionaire founder and CEO of crypto exchange FDX, Sam Bankman-Fried, who disclosed this week through filings with the SEC that he has acquired a 7.6% stake in the business for the sum of $648 million so far. His average purchase price was $11.52 per share, and and upon the release of the news, shares have been trading slightly higher, although sitting around $10.50 in after hours trading. There was no confirmation that the entrepreneur intends to buy the business, but he didn't rule anything out with many speculating that the combination of crypto and stock options is a good fit for FTX, who's looking to expand its business in the US. Watch this space and eventually the gamblers, oh, I mean the investors on Robinhood will be able to lose their money in multiple forms so they can get back to having a negative account balance. Jumping over to Europe now, Russia is playing hardball with gas supplies. Ukraine has had to suspend the flow of some Russian natural gas to Europe as it was diverted by Russian transmission operator earlier this week. The gas system operator has decided to suspend operations in a major transit point because of interference by the occupying forces. About one third of Russian gas headed to Western Europe passes through Ukraine, although one analyst said that the immediate effect might be limited since much of it can be redirected through another pipeline. Russia's state-owned Gazprom said gas flowing to Europe through Ukraine was down 25% from the day before. And finally for the news, Tesco is looking to use excess office space to provide remote working facilities for startups and office workers. The supermarket chain, who is currently the UK's largest grocery retailer, is working with IWG, formerly known as Regis, to open up space in its stores to provide desks, co-working spaces and meeting rooms. 
From mid-May, the company's opening up its new Malden store and it will be looking to roll out across other sites. Founder and Chief Exec of IWN, Mark Dixon, said that the trial with Tesco was reflective of really strong demand from office workers who wanted a closer-to-home suburban offering as opposed to commuting to city centres. If you want to get hold of me next week, I'll be filming finance news from my local Tesco Express. I'll be down the booze aisle near this special group, so apologise for any noise in advance. And now let's head over to the next section on the news where we look at the worst thing that's happened this week, a reminder that people can sometimes be really stupid. Just when you think it couldn't get any worse, fails of the week. This week has seen the crypto market have an astonishing fall with cryptocurrency Luna. The former top 10 currency has fallen more than 99% at time of filming in one of the greatest and fastest crypto crashes of all time. Luna crashed because of the way it was linked to the stablecoin TerraUSD, which was supposedly tied to the US dollar at a one-to-one -one level. However, unlike other stablecoins, TerraUSD was pegged to the dollar algorithmically, which is a fancy way of saying, look away now, nothing to see here. The currency was decoupled from the dollar earlier this week and has sent the price tumbling, causing leading crypto exchange Binance to temporarily suspend withdrawals on Wednesday. The lunar market cap went from $40 billion to a little over 200 million. Since the news, the crypto market and companies tied to it have seen their share price hit with players like Coinbase down 50% in a week although it is showing some rallying on the upside in after hours. Big hitters in the space like Bitcoin and Ethereum are also down with Bitcoin down 10% for the week, almost 30% for the year. The lessons from this should be that if you're playing with a speculative asset class that promises to deliver 20% interest per year risk free, you need to run as fast as you can and take your money with you. Remember Bernie Madoff? He was only promising 10%. And look what happened there. Anyway, after that mega fail, let's jump to our final section for a light-hearted look at some of the best memes from Reddit's Wall Street Bets this week. Here goes. Welcome to the best of the bets. With the stock market teetering on the edge of a crash and the economy set for a possible recession, avid finance film enthusiasts are already looking forward to The Big Short 2. This sequel is going to be bigger and better than ever before, featuring even more foreclosures and redundancies you have been warned. I can't wait for the trailer. Maybe they'll use one of my clips. If you think finance and investing are boring, take many years and don't offer you many fun in the short term, then you're doing it wrong. This is what happened in just 24 hours in recent weeks. Get yourself in on the action, although be warned, you'll probably lose everything and end up back at the drive through although you'll be the one taking the orders. If you still got a Peloton at home and you're paying your monthly subscription, I'd hold on to the equipment if I were you because one day it might be worth something on eBay in the antique section. One thing I could be pretty sure of is that the bike will buy you a lot more shares if you sell it now than a few months back. Still waiting for that turnaround, guys. And finally, let me leave you with this one because we're all in this one together. We started off 2021 so well. There was so much promise and all you could see were unicorns. It turns out that you were either high on something or you'd picked up your granny's glasses because the reality was something a lot different. Oh, and by the way, you now actually owe the horse money. Now it's turned the other way around. Welcome to the stock market. And that wraps up things for the week. Thanks so much for watching. Please drop me a like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe for many more and feel free to go check out my survival guide for the stock market crash of 2022 next. If you need a plan to help get you through, this is the video for you. But as always, happy investing.